In 1974, scientists discovered something that would soon become the most famous fossil in the world. The fossil was found by archaeologists in the Hadar region of Ethiopia and belonged to a 3.2 million year old hominid, an Australopithecus afarensis. They named her Lucy as the team was listening to the popular Beatles song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds during the excavation process. What made Lucy so special, compared to many of the other fossils found earlier, was that it turned out to be the most complete hominid fossil found up to that time. And because it was so complete, scientists got an unprecedented peak at human history. This amazing discovery led scientists to prove that humans weren't the first animals to walk upright on their two feet. Lucy showed that human ancestors were up and walking around long before the earliest stone tools were made or our brains got bigger. Bipedalism, it seems, was the first step towards becoming human. This was the most obvious proof of the evolutionary link between us and other primates like monkeys and chimps. Fossils are the preserved remains of plants and animals whose bodies were buried in sediments such as sand and mud, under ancient seas, lakes and rivers. When an animal dies, the soft parts of the body, such as the flesh, get decomposed. But the harder parts, such as bones, teeth and shells, turn into minerals and rocks, which have the ability to be preserved for millions of years. Fossils, like buried treasures, tell us secrets of the past and uncover the gap between the known and the unknown. In a way, they help us travel back in time. They provide the pieces of the puzzle to evolutionary history, which explains how we humans got here. How amazing is it that we can imagine and understand human history by studying creatures that existed millions of years ago? Fossils are, without a doubt, the greatest historical treasure that we have. By studying these fossils, we now know that the earliest members of our human lineage, known as hominins, came from Africa, dating back at least four million years. The next major evolutionary stage included the Homo habilis, who inhabited sub-Saharan Africa 1.5 million years ago. Their place was then taken by their taller, more upright, human-like cousins, known as Homo erectus, who inhabited the planet up to 200,000 years ago. By this time, they started to spread around parts of Africa, Europe, and even Asia, as explained by the fossils of their relatives, Homo heidelbergensis, who lived anywhere between 600,000 to 200,000 years ago. Before proceeding, be sure to leave a like for the algorithm and subscribe to our channel clicking the bell. This will encourage us to do better and you'll never miss any of our weekly videos. They may have shared the earth with other hominids, such as the Neanderthals and the fully modern humans known as Homo sapiens, who only came into the picture 150,000 years ago. The story of human origins is certainly incomplete, and the narrative keeps changing with newly made discoveries and fossil records. But with each discovery and each fossil uncovered, we move one step closer to the truth about our evolution. Fossils are useful not just to explain human history, but also to know about all the other wonderful animals that inhabited the Earth before us, how they lived and prospered on our beautiful planet, and how they shaped our planet into what it is now. The fossils of cyanobacteria, such as stromatolites, that existed three billion years ago tell us that the Earth didn't have oxygen like we do today. These cyanobacteria spread throughout the Earth and increased the oxygen percentage from 1% to 20%, 
within a two billion year span. Not only did they allow life to flourish, but they were also the reason our oceans changed from a reddish color to the actual color we see today. Think about what else fossils can tell us. Our fascination with dinosaurs would never have been possible without fossils. We know for certain that there were once giant reptiles that roamed the Earth for over 150 million years. Without fossils, we could have never known about these magnificent creatures, some of which were the size of three-story buildings in a modern city. The first dinosaur fossil ever found was in 1676 in England by a professor at Oxford University who mistook it for a human giant. The femur he identified belonged to a Megalosaurus that lived 170 million years ago in the Middle Jurassic period. This was the first time dinosaurs were distinctly identified and given a name, and so the Megalosaurus became the first dinosaur known to man. Since then, many more species were identified, and a whole world of giant creatures opened up. The Patago Titan, which lived in the late Cretaceous period, roughly 100 million years ago, could possibly be the biggest dinosaur that ever lived. Although the Argentinosaurus might give it fierce competition, these dinosaurs were so big that they were given the name Titanosaurs. The femur of the Patago Titan alone weighs more than half a ton, and their body weight as much as seven African elephants. Imagine that! But the question remains, how did these herbivorous animals get so big? Researchers believe that there was an explosion of flowering plants at the time, which allowed them to consume as much as they wanted and grow enormous in size. We can't talk about fossils and not discuss the Tyrannosaurus rex, perhaps the most well-known dinosaur popularized by the Jurassic Park movie. The name Tyrannosaurus rex comes from Greek and Latin words that mean tyrant lizard king. They lived in the Cretaceous period, about 66 million years ago. And although they weren't the biggest of dinosaurs, they were fierce and had the greatest bite force of any animal in history. It was an apex predator during its time, standing mighty at 40 feet in length and weighing over 14 tons. They had a lifespan of up to 30 years and they hunted Triceratops which were themselves giant creatures that weighed five tons. Sue, in the Chicago Museum, is the most complete T-Rex fossil we have, being over 90% complete and was auctioned out for a whopping $8.3 million. In 1860, scientists were shocked to discover a fossil from the limestone deposits of Solhofen, Germany, a fossil that is known to be the transition or missing link between extinct dinosaurs and modern birds, the Archaeopteryx. This may be the oldest known bird, living sometime during the late Jurassic period, 150 million years ago. These dinosaur birds had a coat of feathers, a bird-like beak, and a wishbone, but they also retained a handful of teeth, a long, bony tail, and three claws jutting out from the middle of each of its wings all of which are extremely reptilian characteristics that are not seen in any modern birds. It was as much a dinosaur as it was a bird, with the size of a modern pigeon. Another interesting fossil found by archaeologists belonged to a strange-looking creature called the Iguanodon. The fossil, when first discovered, was thought to belong to a fish, and later to a rhinoceros, and finally to a flesh-eating reptile. The fossil was first identified by Englishman Dr. Gideon Mantle, who excavated what turned out to be a gigantic tooth. So he gave it the name Iguanodon, which was Greek for iguana's tooth. For many decades, scientists could not find any other Iguanodon fossils, so they had to make artistic recreations of what Iguanodons looked like. But in 1878, two miners in Belgium stumbled upon a fossil treasure. 1,000 feet below the surface of the Earth, they found 14 perfectly preserved iguanodon skeletons, which meant we could finally know more about them. 
They belong to the family of ornithopods, which weren't as big as the titanosaurs or the tyrannosaurus. But they had other special features, like being able to run on their hind legs and developing a huge thumb-like spike to deter predators and break down thick vegetation. Don't be confused by their name and think they came from a lineage of iguanas. They have no evolutionary link to iguanas and are in fact more closely related to hadrosaurs or duckbill dinosaurs. Dinosaur fossils are so valuable because nearly all fossils we find, around 99%, are from sea marine animals such as shellfish and sharks because they lived in the sea where sand or mud could bury their remains quickly after they died. Most dinosaur fossils are also found near places where there was once a lake or a river. Over time, when a place gets flooded or swept by a river, the remains of the dinosaurs get covered in mud and silt. As for the dinosaurs that lived near a jungle or a mountain, for the most part, as more layers form on top, the fossils get crushed under the pressure and turn into sedimentary rock. These need to be a preserving environment for fossils to form, which is why they're so rare. Fossils of insects that get trapped in amber from tree sap can be so well preserved that scientists can extract genetic material from the insects and study them deeply. This fossilization happens because the tree sap or resin hardens over time and provides a biological inert tomb for the insects, which protects the soft tissues from decomposing. Archaeologists work hard to recover fossils because with every fossil uncovered, our planet's ancient past becomes clearer, helping us understand our world a little better.